the STARS project is a very um, important project which involved the strengthening of very critical elements within the ministry. Uh, the intention was to ensure that the community is involved and uh, is participating in the running of the school. The program uh, started as a pilot and they were centering on, uh, on three districts. Later on we asked them to, to cover all the seven districts. I am responsible for the implementation of the curriculum in the district. Uh, the STARS project uh, that was uh, sponsored by ECOS, it was looking at uh, strengthening um, transparency, accountability and responsiveness in schools. Uh, it was implemented in 15 schools uh, out of 207 schools that we have. Um, uh, quite a number of trainings were done including training of uh, SDCs, trainings of uh, GNC teachers, that is the guidance and counseling teachers. Some prefer to call them the PSS teachers. They were trained and also citizens were trained, including the learners themselves. They were part and parcel of the trainings. Previously, parents were not much involved. They didn't participate a lot in such uh, issues as governance <coughs> issues. But after this training now, where parents were called in and they were trained and then they went back and they gave feedback to the community. Yes. We have seen parents coming in trying to be part and parcel of the school. Somebody donated um, pigs to the school oh. and they've multiplied and they've sold some of the pigs. They also have got a very viable poultry project where they are selling their chickens, the sassos, uh, the broilers. Yes. They, they are augmenting their um, levies with that. And we're looking at uh, aspects of school governance in terms of responsiveness, uh, community engagement and participation. We're also looking at uh, uh, developing the SDCs in financial management. We had um, 11 schools in the program. There's um, eight primary schools and three secondary schools. Basically, we, we started with uh, a needs assessment. We went to the school because for us to implement the program, we wanted to have a baseline. It went on very well. I think we had 100% attendance of the expected numbers that we invited. They were basically on uh, school management in terms of financial management, school governance, and the establishment of child advisory boards. In Sanyati district, uh, we started with the training of citizens on the use of suggestion boxes. We also had monitoring visits to the schools. Then currently, the schools are opening. We are looking forward to having more uh, visits to the schools. We are certainly working on a number of national policies on inclusive education, child abuse, and how to handle disciplinary cases at school level. It is emanating from observations made during the trainings that we were carrying out and the monitoring exercise that we were carrying out in our schools. Because of the STARS project, let me start off by the Secretary Secular number three of 2019. This one was strengthening the accountability of the education system. And this was part and parcel of the objectives of STARS. 
the accountability. And we found that with this project, our learners are no longer being sent away from school because of non-payment of levies or of fees. It is the contract between the parents and the school. And we found our schools putting in place payment plans for levies and fees. Our lenders are no longer affected by non-payment of fees. The Secretary of Secretary, uh, minute number one of 2020, it uh, prohibited the sending away of uh, learners for any reason, especially for um, uh, lack of uh, school fees. Uh, this actually improved the attendance in our in our schools. The introduction of ledger cards, management of debtors. This was non-existent in most of our schools. And with the training, we are happy that uh, they now know that those that have not paid should not be left just like that. And they have to have a management system to say, we have got to make a follow-up of our Deaths. On the aspect of ledger cards, all schools are supposed to have ledger cards. So these ledger cards, they give a financial history or financial background of a learner from the time when he is enrolled at a school to the time when he leaves that school. So this ledger card is also an easy way where we can see this learner's um, debts or if he, he or she has made an overpayment, it is also recorded. Before the trainings, a revenue was collected in cash and also through my direct deposits from Kuma banks. During the time, there was a circular which came and allowed the schools to have vehicles. There was confusion at the start regarding eco cash or one money. We discouraged the use of personal wallets. But we then issued a circular to our schools so that they approach the service providers so that they will be issued with the bill codes. Because the bill codes, these are only income hands that only receive and the money is transferred to, to their respective bank accounts. There, there's no problem. Those who want the bill codes applied for the bill codes, it's working on well. In 2018, most of our schools were using the others, uh, like I said before, direct deposit. Then the, PD, the former PD uh, uh, written a, a circular to announce that all schools are now uh, allowed to use Bila codes to receive the levies. That's when it started. Doing the electronic payments, it helped a lot where a person or a parent with his cash in his mobile wallet could transfer the money to the school's Bila code. Some would go and swipe. It was actually an eye-opener to us, especially taking into account that we used to we, we used to the cash system. So with the introduction of the uh, Bila codes, the eco cash, I feel that there was uh, there's need now for us to change the policy so that we accommodate uh, the issue of uh, using the eco cash or the Bila codes because that is not in our statutory instrument or in our policy. A district office, we we managed to come out with a circular on fees collection or on data management, which we thought might help in recovering the data, the long outstanding data. Instead of using the traditional way of saying where the parents would be taken to the chief or to be reported to the chief, we came out with a, 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 a a, a paper or a circular, if I should call it a memo, which will help the school heads together with the school management or the SDCs, if I can say the SDCs, to work together, maybe to call in the parents and um, find a way, 
and ad of advising them maybe to be involved in projects that will help them to get income, that will help them to pay fees for their children. Right, what has happened is that um, even as a province, for example, much West, uh, you, people may not be aware, but the cause is aware that we, we developed a, a, a document to support what was going on in terms of left collection. And the document has a lot of strategies to augment the efforts schools were making to collect the levies from the parents. Of course, they helped us to uh, produce the document. And the document has now been distributed to um, all schools in Zimbabwe. It's now helping our schools in Zimbabwe. And we have also produced a second one, uh, a handbook on the roles of the SDCs, uh, the community, the roles of the head in a school and so forth, to try and buttress what is taking place in the community engagement programs. Like for instance, we have the, the director set to your number, I've forgotten the number, but... 27, 27 2008. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. Which talks of uh, a compulsory establishment of child abuse prevention and management reporting structures mm -hmm. at every educational institution under the purview of the Minister of Education. So the establishment of these child advisory reports really complements that uh, policy. And right now we have some sensitization that we carried in Chegutu Eben. I can mention Fupa Jena High and Chegutu High, where we had community dialogue in line with this uh, policy uh, P35, trying to sensitize the community to get to know, to be aware of the P35, the reintegration of the girl child, pregnant girl child into the school system. Also, as far as the learners are concerned, we also discovered that uh, learners in the past were not being involved in the selection of BIM beneficiaries. Uh, now, with the coming of uh, STARS, I think uh, we have uh, learners in being incorporated in the selection of uh, disadvantaged learners. We used to have a BIM manual, but the, the old BIM manual did not include learners. But the new updated BIM manual now is the learners among the members of the committee. So it's a change that we have seen. It's something new, additional, something new to the, to the policy, the inclusion of learners. And we, we want to believe it's a step into the participation of learners in their own learning situations. Before we did not have uh, children in the BIM committee, but uh, now we have our children participating in the BIM committee. We have got uh, one boy, one girl in the BIM committee, which is quite recommendable indeed. But however, as children, I think we need to push so that at least we could have uh, two boys, two girls in the BIM selection committee. As you still remember that we have circular number 27 of 2008, which talks about the establishment of child protection committees. Uh, a cause brought in the CABS issue. We now have children who are getting more information from their peers. With reference to child pro protection committees, uh, we discovered that uh, the reporting structure, in fact, improved in our schools and uh, learners were made aware of their rights. After the workshop, schools mounted suggestion boxes for anonymous letters and the suggestion boxes reported on sexual abuse, physical abuse, neglect, emotional abuse. You know, previously, most learners were keeping quiet. They were being abused if in him, um, uh, type of abuses are taught out and now during those days. Yes, it is alleged that uh, a female people was uh, touched on a private part by uh, a teacher. 
And so the matter reached the, the parents and the parent raised the issue with the head as well as with the district office. And the, an investigation was carried out. But as I said, the matter is still yet to be resolved. As a result of the suggestion boxes, we have had one teacher being discharged from service after pupils reported through the suggestion box. And then it got to us as district who instituted investigations and established that there was a case and um, our misconduct proceedings were carried out and one teacher actually lost his job. Well, originally the children did not have an opportunity or rather the communities did not have any opportunity to expose certain practices that we were obtaining in the areas. But uh, because of this intervention, we now have uh, cases being reported. And some of them don't even relate to the children. They actually relate to other criminal activities that may be rampant in the area. There are a lot of cases. Maybe I can reflect to a certain position within the district. Maybe somewhere in Mondoro where parents are complaining that uh, this particular school is purchasing certain items maybe to one, school, to one shop or to one organization. And it's raising flags. Why are they paying to that shop alone? Where, well, at least there are a lot of shops around. So they need to change the shops where they want to procure their goods and items so that they won't be that aspect of corruption and the like. In terms of reporting uh, what is happening in our schools, they have become very handy. And uh, when they are opened, the heads of schools see exactly what parents, what learners are saying about their schools and adjust where adjustment is called for. And where they fail to do that, then we get anonymous letters uh, coming to our, our district offices, our provincial offices, which we, we act on uh, immediately. 